Hey guys, welcome in to our first Wednesday evening virtual student gathering. Kate here, Parker there, right in front of his newly made shelter in place garden. He made this since we've had a little bit of extra time at home. I don't know, he might would have done it anyway. Probably, but he's been picking up new hobbies. So what about you guys? Have you been learning any new hobbies or getting into anything new? We'd love to hear, comment down below. We heard about Bolin's band group that's playing every day at noon in the driveways. That is so awesome, super cool. We'd love to hear from all of you what you guys are doing. But we're here for announcements, so get to it. Hey guys, it's me, Parker. Um, I missed you all a lot, but I'm here for some announcements. Business number one, small groups. Right after your virtual gathering, about 5.30, link for the group, link for the groups in the comments below. If you're watching on Facebook or on the student ministry page on the website. Business order two is game night. Every Monday at 7.30, we played live trivia on Facebook this week. And we'll probably try something new next week. So if you ever have any suggestions on what you want to play, please let us know in the comments or send us a message. So for business number three, it's cake. Devos. We're gonna start sending some out on Fridays. They're just gonna be about five minutes hosted by Hunter or a leader or a student such as you. If you would like to be a part of that, of hosting one of those, please reach out to us. We just hope to encourage you in your walk with Jesus every Friday, along with every other day of the week. But Fridays will be Devo Fridays. Hey y'all, happy quarantined Wednesday, number 400 or however many it's been uh, so far. Okay, maybe it hasn't been quite that many, but it definitely feels like it's been a long time uh, for sure. Uh, I hope you guys um, were able to have a good Easter weekend and, and, and celebrating, hopefully with some of your, your family. I know Easter this year is very different uh, for most of us, but I was thankful. Um, my girls and I, we, we actually got to get outside a little bit and we got to see some family from a safe distance. Uh, we still practiced our social distancing, but we got to get out and our girls got to do an, an egg hunt, which they always enjoy. And, and Kate and I, we always benefit, my wife Kate and I, we always benefit from that as well because uh, we get all the leftover candy, um, which is awesome. I'm a sucker for candy, uh, no pun intended there. Uh, yeah, this year, I think, I was thinking about my favorite candy this year that we got, and I think it's, it was these little gummy Krabby Patties from SpongeBob. Any SpongeBob fans? I don't know if you've seen those gummy Krabby Patties. So good. No shame, I, I had probably too many of those, but if you haven't, haven't tried them, you should try them out. Gummy Krabby Patties, that was bomb. All right, well, obviously, I, I'm sure most of us know that the Easter is so much more uh, than just egg hunts and candy and all that stuff. Uh, those are some, some definitely some fun ways to celebrate Easter, but we know that Easter is really about the most important event and most impactful event in all of history. And that's Jesus's victory over sin and death and that w what that means for, for each one of us. And we celebrate this still today because of the amazing fact that he did all of that for us, to give us life, to give us salvation. And we still celebrate this today because not only was that uh, the most important event in history, but it's more relevant than anything else in our lives still today. Jesus coming to save us from our sin is not just some moment that we read about in our history books that can maybe add value to our lives. That's not just it. Jesus himself is the source of life. He is the source of life. Jesus, he's not just someone uh, to be a fan of. He's not just someone to, to claim so that we can say that we're a Christian just in case what everybody says about him being a savior happens to be true. 
Uh, Jesus is not just a backup plan or just some religion for us to choose from. He's so much more than that. Jesus is the only way to be saved and the only way to have life, life that is abundant and life that is eternal. So here is a question uh, for you guys this evening. Do you know him? Do you know Jesus? Because here's the thing, you guys, it's not just, it's not enough to just know about Jesus, but do you really know him as the only one who can save you and the only one who can give you life? Well, before we open up God's word uh, together this evening, if you would join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this evening. God, I thank you that um, although we can't gather in person right now, we look forward to when we can hang out with each other again, but that we get to gather um, again and get into your word together um, virtually and that you meet with us, God, that you promise that we're two or more gather in my name, that, that you're there with them and that your spirit dwells with us and in us when we put our faith in you. And so God, I pray um, that as we open your word this morning or this evening, that you would just reveal more to us of who you are and how beautiful and amazing you are and how, um, God, uh, you love us so much. And that that would just deepen our love for you and our, our, our faithfulness um, to you. God, I thank you that you never change, that you're always faithful and your word, it always remains true. And so God, speak to us through your word this morning and your spirit. We give this uh, this evening <laughs> all to you for your glory. Amen. Obviously, I'm, I'm not used to uh, to meeting in the, in the evening now. Uh, it's going to take a little while to get used to, but here we are. Uh, I'm excited about it. Uh, so when it comes to knowing Jesus as the only Savior and giver of life, and before I, I believe that we can see the gospel as really the greatest news we could ever know, I think we need to take some time to answer these questions. What, who, how, and why? So what did Jesus come to save us from? Who all needs a savior? Who all did Jesus come to save? Who all did he die for? How are we saved? And then why did Jesus come to save us? So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna get into God's word and, and answer those questions through, through reading his, his truth uh, for our lives. So let's start by answering the what and the who. What did Jesus come to save us from? So I invite you, if you have your Bibles, you can click there on your phone. We're gonna be reading about this in Romans chapter six. We're gonna be starting in verse 20. Romans chapter six, verse 20 through 23 says, for when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at that time from the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So we see here um, that before God offers us this free gift of eternal life through Jesus, he says that we were slaves to our sin and that the wages of that sin leads to death. The wages of that sin is death. So whether we choose to admit that to be true or we, we call it something else, I think we all know that this is true in each of our lives. We all know that not a single one of us is perfect. Uh, we've all made mistakes. We've all fallen short. We all have sinned. And if we're honest, we, we know that there's nothing we can possibly do on our own to fix this within ourselves. So there's no possible way that we can be sin-free, right, on our own. And so what, what do we do with that, right? Like, what do we do 
with the, the sobering fact that the wages of our sin is death and, and the fact that we can't do anything about that. What do we do about that? Well, thankfully, that's the what that Jesus came to save us from. That penalty of our sin uh, that, that leads to death that we owed to God, he came and he took that penalty upon himself and he bared the weight of God's wrath that was due to us. And instead, he offered us new life, the free gift of eternal life instead. How amazing is that? So that's the what that Jesus came to save us from. Now let's answer the who's. Who all needs a savior in the world and and who all did Jesus come to save? Who all did Jesus die for? Uh, To answer these questions, we're gonna gonna stay in Romans. Uh, We're gonna flip over to Romans chapter three. We're gonna be starting in verse 10. So if you would go back to Romans with me. Let's flip over to three starting in verse 10 through 12. As it is written, none is righteous. No, not one. No one understands. No one seeks for God. All have turned aside. Together they have become worthless. No one does good, not even one. Pretty clear there um, who all who all need saving. And let's go down to verse 23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So I think it's clear to see here who all needs a savior, right? Everyone. Everyone. God's word says that none is righteous, not one does good, and all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, we all need a savior. It's not like, it doesn't, the Bible doesn't say like, oh, a lot of people are bad, but, but most people are good. Um, it, it makes me, it reminds me of this country song, any country uh, fans watching, it says that I believe most people are good and so on. I, I'm definitely not gonna embarrass myself and attempt to sing that song, but if you're a country fan, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. I believe most pe- people are good. It's a catchy song, and I'm sure the intentions behind the song, um, I'm sure they, they meant well, and the intentions were good. But the Bible is, is pretty clear. God's word is pretty clear that not, not one is good. Not one. Not, not most people are good. No, not one is good. And so that answers the question of, of who all needs saving, right? We all need a savior. Unfortunately, though, this is a common, like this song, it's a common misconception in our world today. It's so dangerous for someone to think that they're good enough, to, to think something along the lines of, oh, my, my good out, definitely outweighs my bad. So uh, I think that means that me and God, I think we're good. I think we're good because, you know, my good outweighs my bad. Well, unfortunately, uh, that's, not, that's not how it works. That's not what the Bible says. And, and that sort of thinking, you guys, is, is actually devastating. And, and that sort of thinking can keep a person from recognizing their, their need for Jesus, the only one who can save them and give them life. It keeps them from recognizing their need for Jesus. And so that mind frame is, is dangerous. Um, but this leads us to the second who. Who all did Jesus come to save? Let's look together back in Romans 6 uh, to answer who all did Jesus come to save. Romans 6.10 says, For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. For the death he died, he died to sin once, and for, for who? For all. So God's, God's word says that he died once for all, right? Pretty amazing that we all sin, we all fall short, we all need a savior, and we have a God who came, and he chose to die once for all, so that we could have an opportunity to, to know him, to be in a relationship 
with him and he provided a way for us. That's how much God loves all of his people. That's how much God loves the whole world that he would come to die once and for all. And so pretty clear there. Uh, but then again, in, and we, if we read in 1 John chapter 2, verse 2, it says, he is the propitiation for our sins and not for our sins only, but also for the sins of the whole world not just for our sins, but for the sins of the whole world. That's what God's word says, the whole world. Do you know who's all included in that? I think you you get my my point, right? He wants to save the whole world. So so if for whatever reason you think that, that maybe you're too far gone, or maybe you think that you don't qualify uh, for Jesus to save you, let me just tell you, Don't believe that lie. That's a lie that's not true. He loves you and he died for you also to provide a way for you to have new life and to be saved from the wages of your sin. This is is amazing and I, I hope that you believe and know that is true. And so those, uh, that's what God's word shows us about what God came to save us from and and the who. Now, I, I think it's important for us to acknowledge in all of this, and like I said earlier, that, that Jesus is not just uh, another religion to choose from. Jesus isn't just one of many saviors. He's not just a savior. Jesus is the only savior. He is the only savior. I think it's interesting that out of all religions, in our world today that the God of Christianity is the only one that offers us salvation as a free gift. Knowing that we couldn't possibly earn it on our own, Jesus is the only God who came down, left his throne, came down to earth to make a way for us to actually be in a relationship with him, both now while we're here on earth and for eternity. He's the only God that does that. He's the only God. There's no other religion like this in the world because it's not about religion. It's about relationship. Judaism teaches that one can save themselves by changing their behavior and doing good deeds. Islam says that we can get to heaven by, by, forming, um, by forming the five pillars on our own doing. Hinduism claims that if we store up enough good karma, then we can reunite with with Brahman, who is known to be the Hindu god. Buddhism says we can enlighten and discipline ourselves to this thing called nirvana, which they say is the highest spiritual goal that a human can attain by practicing some sort of rules called the Eightfold Path. I think it's clear to see that that every one of these religions says that we have to work uh, our way to God. We have to work our way to heaven. And that if we want to be saved and have a better life, then we have to earn it. That's what each one of these religions um, says to practice. Well, it's clear to me, and I I hope you see from from God's word showing us the answers to what we needed saved from and and who all needs a savior. And from our own experience with with sin in our lives that not a single one of these religions can possibly save us. Because we know that we can't possibly live a perfect life like, like some of these are, most, all of these are requiring for us to work towards. No matter how hard we try, we can't possibly do that. We can't possibly attain that. And so any religion that requires someone to work in order to earn their salvation or, or to be with God is not worth following at all because that's not possible. Hopefully we see in our own lives that that's not possible and that that religion can never save us. Religion can never save us. But Jesus, Jesus on the other hand, is the only, the one and only God that knew we couldn't possibly save ourselves. 
And he's the only God that was willing to come down and make a way for us to be in a relationship with him now and forever by paying this penalty of our sins and offering us the free gift of new life instead as a gift. He's the only one that did that. Hosea 13, four says, you know no God but me. And besides me, there is no savior. You know no God but me, and besides me, there is no savior. And John 14, six says, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, except through Jesus. It's the only way, the only Savior. And so I really hope, I really hope that out of, out of love for you, that you're convinced that, that Jesus is not just a Savior He's just not, he's not one of many saviors to, to choose from. It's not about religion, it's about relationship. And I really hope that you're convinced and you believe that Jesus is the only savior. He is the only savior. God so loved the world that he, that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. This is the greatest news that we could, we could ever hear and the greatest news that we could ever choose to believe. And so I hope more than anything this evening that you believe that, that you know that Jesus is the only Savior. So we've answered the what and the who. Now I wanna quickly close our time by answering the why and, and the how in God's word. Why did Jesus come to save us? Why did he save us? Why did he do that? Well, 2 Corinthians, if you would turn there, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 19 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. This is the answer to the why. This is what we're made for. This is what we're called to and this is what we're saved for. And it's this, to know Jesus and to share with the whole world his message of reconciliation. To know Jesus and to share with the whole world the good news that, that he is the only, the one and only savior who can give them life and save them from the wages of their sin. This is, this is why, this is what we're called to. And so who do you know in your life who needs Jesus? Who do you know that needs to know him, to needs to know this truth? Go tell them. Let's go tell them. There is nothing more important and nothing more loving that we can do for a person than to introduce them to Jesus, the only one who can save them and give them life that's abundant and eternal. So if you're watching uh, this evening and you haven't known Jesus as, as your Lord and Savior, you haven't surrendered your life to him, you can do that today, today. So here's the how. Romans 10, nine says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's the how. You confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. So if you believe this amazing truth and you're ready to receive this free gift of salvation and to have a relationship with God now on this earth and forever, then I would encourage you to tell God about that. Um, to tell God when we pray here in a second that you're ready to surrender your life to him out of recognizing all that he's done for you, to make a way for you to have life. So I encourage you to do that 
And if you're watching and, and you know Jesus and, and you want to, to tell people about him, you wanna share the gospel, the good news, but maybe you feel like you don't know how, we can relate to that. And, and me or any of the other leaders, we would, we would love to come, come alongside you, connect with you, and just uh, provide for you resources and tips just to be able to help you know how to do that. Uh, we'd love to do that. So please reach out to us um, if you want help on, on learning how to share your faith and share the good news of Jesus with those in your life. Um, in any way, message us and uh, we'll get back with you on that and would love to help you with that. Well, that's all for this evening, guys. Let's pray together. Uh, and then before you go, I wanna show you a video that's uh, gonna introduce our Grove Students video challenge for this week. It's, it's pretty awesome, pretty funny. So be sure to check that out after we pray. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for who you are. God, I thank you for being a God um, that's not distant, for being a God that doesn't care about us, doesn't love us, but loved us so much, wanted to be with us so much that, that you left your throne. Um, you didn't need us, but we needed you. And so you decided to leave your throne, to live a perfect sin-free life, and then to die a death on our behalf, taking the penalty of our sin. God, thank you for doing that, for making a way for us to be in a relationship with you, both now and forever, for giving us a way to be saved when we couldn't possibly save ourselves. And so, Lord, I pray if there's anyone here this evening um, that, that is, is ready, that, that believes uh, this truth, that recognizes their sin and, and is ready to just lay that down at the cross and to step into a relationship with you, Lord, I pray that your spirit would lead them to do that right now to confess with their mouth um, that you are Lord Jesus and God, that your spirit would lead them to believe in their hearts um, that you raised Jesus from the dead, that your spirit would dwell into, in them. You'd give them new life that's abundant and eternal. God, we love you. Uh, we give you this time all for your glory and your honor. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, well, uh, thanks for joining us this Wednesday evening, um, and please watch this video. How awesome was that video? Uh, thanks to Brian and, and Tyler Kuhn. They have introduced our, our weekly challenge for this week. We're going to call it the Pogo Stick Challenge. And so if you have a Pogo Stick at home, I want you to get creative and, and film a 30-second or less video of, of your best Pogo Stick act. It can be funny or impressive, whatever you want to do. So that's your challenge this week if you have a Pogo Stick. And then share that with us. Uh, either directly you can text me at 512-577-6598 or post it on your social media account and tag Grove Students either way. Um, but then also on top of that, we're going to do a little quarantine tag and we have pogo sticks of our own. And so if you get a text message from us this week that says, tag, you're it, we're gonna drop a pogo stick off at your front door and you've got about two hours or so to come up with your most creative pogo stick act as well and then share that with us and then we'll tag somebody else throughout the week. And so the next week on Wednesday, we'll come together, we'll vote on the most creative pogo stick act and then we'll give the winner a prize. Uh, so that's your challenge for this week. Uh, thanks, Brian and Tyler, for introducing that Pogo Stick challenge to us. That was awesome. Well, hey, guys, thanks for joining us this evening. I hope to see you at small groups right after this, and y'all have a good evening. <laughs>